Today we're going to build a storage cart for my air compressor and I recently bought a portable plane and I would like to get that on top of it so that I have a small space over here that's open and I can store both of those in one spot. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. Merry Christmas. So I bought this DeWalt portable thickness planer six months ago or something like that and here it sits still in the box. I've got some projects for it. I would like to start doing a little bit of woodworking using some rough sawn lumber and this is the answer to making that stuff nice. So we need to get it out of the box and measure the base so I can make this cart. So there we have it. It weighs a whopping 88 pounds. It's supposed to be a portable thickness planer, but it's pretty heavy just to be toting around. You'd need a couple of guys to move it around. I don't plan on taking it anywhere. It'll get used right here. Now that it's out of the box, I can measure this base and figure out the dimensions that I want to build this table. Looks like 18 by 24 is going to work fine for me. I'm going to make sure that's going to fit in this spot I have right here. So this area right here is where I want to put it. It's going to be a movable cart. So if I need to access this tool cart, I can. Twenty-four by eighteen is going to work just fine. So that's what we're going to roll with. Twenty-four by eighteen. I'll be making the entirety of this cart out of two by fours. It will have caster wheels on it. So the first thing I want to do is cut two pieces at 24 inches. So what I've done is I've cut this piece a little bit long so that I can trim off this factory end also and make sure that it's square. I have to say too, I don't have any plans for this cart other than in my head. So we'll just be winging it as we go. Typically this is how I kind of do things when I build something like this. It's out of the ordinary. It's not like you're going to find a drawing with the exact dimensions you need. So I have a good idea how I'm going to do it and I'm going to take you along. So with the two 24 inch pieces cut, I now need three 18 inch pieces. I'm going to go ahead and get them cut and we'll come back and start getting this base put together. Now that I have everything for the base cut, I want to mark this back one and a half inches on all four corners and both sides and I'll show you why right here in a second I want to keep this part of the frame an inch and a half away because my uprights are going to go on like this so this way I'm utilizing the much, as much of the inside space as I can also I have my caster wheels that are going to be down here so I want to make sure that my caster wheel is back that inch and a half so that I have no problems putting a couple of screws in through here and one through here. So I'm going to get these all marked out and then we're going to start putting it together. I have to say too I've taken into consideration the size of my air compressor and it will fit nicely in the same platform. 
So, just so you know, I haven't forgotten to do that. I did fail to say that I did, but it will fit nicely in there. Now with that complete, I want to go ahead and get my holes marked out for my casters so that I don't put a screw attaching one of these cross pieces where I need to attach my caster. So this will just give me a good idea of where not to use any wood screws for assembly. I will install the casters very last. But at least I know where my fasteners are going to be. Okay, with that marked out, we are ready to start assembling. And I do want to use a little bit of wood glue on here just to give it more strength. Like I say, that planer is 80 pounds or 88 pounds, so it, it needs to be a pretty rigid installation that I have here, and the wood glue is gonna help hold it nice and tight. Just for a reference of the glue, I'm going to go ahead and get me some marks on here where I want the glue to be. I also want to give myself a little mark on the side here, just for reference when I'm putting it together with that marked out I'm going to get me a little glue right here on this one get it lined up Square it up. Like that, I'm going to get me a clamp on here so that it doesn't move around. Recheck it one time. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and get me a screw in it. I'm going to put two screws in here. I'm using two and a half inch construction screws. Same thing here, get us a little glue on it. 
get it squared up. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side and then one piece for the center. Now I'm going to put in my center brace. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, it's just basically support for the plywood floor that I'm going to put into it. So I'm just going to mark it three and a half this way and three and a half this way. And this is basically for my glue. I'm going to go ahead and mark the center of it so that I'll be able to see it here at one and three quarters and one and three quarters my pieces here are 24 inches so 12 is the center so I'm just going to get me a mark there and a mark right here Go ahead and get my glue on this. Slip it under here. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to just squeeze me a clamp on here and push it down. Just so nothing moves while I put the screws in. we can go ahead and flip her over now I'm going to cut me a piece of plywood to make my platform right here for my compressor to sit on a couple weeks ago I built a shelf here in my workshop and I have this 18 inch wide piece of material left so there is a method to my madness as I was hoping I could get away with 18 inches wide and the length wouldn't have really mattered so this is already cut to width from me ripping it down so I just need to cut it at 24 inches. Now with that cut off, I do need to cut some little notches out here for my 2x4s to sit in. So I'm going to get them measured out and then I'll use the jigsaw and cut them out. So they're going to be three and a half inches by one and a half. And 
And I'll need to do that on all four corners. So now I'll just use my speed square and complete these lines. Even though it's not perfectly square. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these cut out. screwed that up so here's what happened I got a little bit ahead of myself and I laid this out wrong so I'm gonna cut another one and lay it out right I now have a piece cut out properly I don't know when the last time is I've messed up on a layout like that but it's been a long time so just a good uh, refresher pay attention to what you're doing don't get in such a hurry like I did. All right, I've got this set on here and I'm just gonna take this scrap piece of two by four and just check my clearances real quick and make sure that I'm good. And I am, I'm in good shape. Just going to run me a line right across here for my screws. I'm going to be using some inch and a quarter construction screws. And I'm also going to put just a little glue on these two by fours as well. a little bit of glue on here I don't want to get too crazy this will never come apart which I'm okay with that start attaching it I just want to double check make sure I got all my room I am good happy with that
a little bit when I put that screw in, so I just want to recheck. This is my old driver. My newer one is sitting in a bucket up north. This one, the trigger is a little bit weird, but it still works. Now with that in place, I'm going to get the air compressor set up here and measure for my uprights. I don't want my uprights to be like ridiculously tall, but I want to have enough room where I can easily reach in and grab this air compressor and pull it out. I could use it in here. I don't know if I'll do that or not. I'm going to set it up where I can get to the cord and everything from the back, but we'll just time will tell. You never know. I'm thinking about 30 inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut four pieces at 30 inches and then we'll get them on right here. I have my four uprights cut at 30 inches and they're just sitting here and I've flipped them and turned them and got them lined up where they're the best. These two by fours aren't perfect by no means and like I say I'm not looking for perfection here I'm looking for a nice usable tool cart that's going to store two items. So what I want to do is just mark them down here at the bottom so I know which one I'm going to put where before I pull them apart. I'm just going to set these off to the side so they don't fall over while I'm working on the first one. going to be using three inch Spax construction screws. I'm going to put two in on the sides right here and then I'm going to put one up from the bottom and a little bit later when I flip it over to put the wheels on. We are going to glue these also. Be a little bit liberal with it. And set it in there. My cuts should are square, so I'm not too awful worried about squaring everything up at this point in time. And I'm gonna get these screws in. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other three and then we'll come back and take a look at the next step. I have all four of the uprights attached and now what I want to do is cut a 2x4 to go in between these two front and rear supports to square everything up and get them nice and tied together and also for my top. 
And the reason I want to put them in between is because I don't want to make it any larger than it already is. So I'm going to keep it at 18 inches. These over here I will put on the outside and it'll just be slightly longer. So what I'm going to do is take my measurement down low right here at the platform just in case there's any variation up top. That is going to be 20 and 7 eighths. I'm going to get them cut and we'll get them in next. With my air compressor out of the way, I've got these cut and I am going to get them placed in here where they need to be. I, there's warpage to these 2x4s, especially this one, this last one that I have to finish this up with, is in pretty bad shape in all reality. But we will be just fine. We're going to kind of take the best side and screw it in first and then force the other side into place. For this particular attachment, I am not going to use any glue here, but I will across the top when I put the top piece on, and that'll also help to lock these in very nicely. So I am going to start on this side right here and get this one knocked into place. It's fighting me a little bit, meaning the screw is wanting to push the wood down. So to combat that, I'm going to put a clamp right here with a 2x4 to hold it into place. So now we can kind of see how bad the material is and how far it pushed it out of place. It's going to fight me.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get this one in. Same process. We may have tweaked the whole thing, pushing that one into place. I'm not going to let it slow me down any. I've cut two 18 inch pieces to go across here. And because that there's bowed in a little bit, I've got this 15 inch piece because I need a center brace. But for right now, I'm going to pull it into position right here. And just use it to give me my 18 for here. And that looks really good. I'm going to be using some two and a half inch screws to hold this in place. Also construction screws. On this I will be using some glue just to help hold things in place and especially since it's so kicked out of proportion from the 2x4's being so bad. ahead and squeeze this clamp on here that is really close to where I want it Good. Go ahead and send these screws home. exact same thing on the other side and then we'll get the center brace in with those in place I have my center piece slid in here and I'm just going to do the same thing get it lined up real good and I'm going to put two screws in it and the same thing two and a half inch construction screws Turn it around and get the other side.
Now what I want to do just for some extra stability is I'm going to put a piece of plywood on three sides leaving the front open. I'm not going to close it in completely. I am just going to close in this maybe down you know 12 inches or 18 inches or whatever just to give it some structure. This one I'll probably do the 18 inches. I'll see what I have left from the top and use if I have enough I'll use that here. Mark this 27. That leaves us 21. Not enough. I do have another strip of plywood that's about 15 inches wide and we'll go ahead and do that and we'll save this for the top. I have my plywood cut and I am just going to put a little bit of glue on it and get it screwed on there. I'm going to be using one and a quarter and like I say this is just going to give it some more stability because of the weight that I'm putting up top. Kind of like the same as a house with some sheathing on it just to help prevent it from racking. Yeah, a couple of clamps on here. Put a few screws in it. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the sides. I've already got them cut out as well. And I'll probably just put them on like that. That should give me plenty of strength and do exactly what I want it to do. So I'm also going to get just a little bit of glue on here and get them on. Alright, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get the other side on and then we'll come back and we'll get after the top. I've cut my top out at 27 inches and I am ready to install that. So I'm just going to put some glue all around these top corners and get this thing screwed on. I should say the top edge here.
like that. Okay, with this finished, we're ready to get the wheels on. I'm going to be attaching the caster wheels with one and a half inch 5 sixteenths lag bolts. And for that I will have to drill a pilot hole in here. I'm going to be using a 13 64th drill bit to drill these pilot holes for the lag screws. Once you get them in your mark, just give them a little push so that it'll set the drill bit. Then the drill bit won't wander on you. I'm going to be using 5 16 washers on my lag bolts and we'll just get that wheel set on there and half inch socket get it started good and go ahead and get the, all the others started and then tighten them up. One last bolt, and we will be done. Look at that. Alright, 
Let's get this thing turned over and see what we got. stuff loaded on here and we'll take a look all right guys there we have it i'm really happy with this it's plenty sturdy i'm not worried about it it's holding a lot of weight it probably weighs 40 50 pounds on its own i'm guessing um, the planer is 80 pounds i'm excited to get that um, set up and plane some wood with it and i will make a video on that my compressor stores very nicely also back here the reason that I left that wood higher on the back is so that I could access the cord in case I did want to use it in the storage cart. The last thing I need to do is put this in the new hole. guys that's all we got for this time I just want to say that I've got about $90 in this cart and some of the material was left over so I didn't have to buy any plywood for this particular project and the two by fours were left over from another project but if I add it all up it's about $90 in material that's all we got for this time if you enjoyed yourself click on that playlist or one of the videos that are going to pop up next to me and remember to always respect the power of your power tools We'll see you soon.